So welcome to my class in continuation with unit 2 collection of data we are doing the sampling method in a little detail and in that we talked we had talked about the random sampling and in the random sampling we talked about the uh, restrictive uh, random sampling and now we are going to do the non-random sampling which is also known as restrictive sampling random sampling so just have a look and just see what it is so here as we notice that the non-random sampling is also known as deliberative sampling and it is done on the basis of the convenience and judgment of the investigator and not on the basis of probability as against random sampling and it is not non-random sampling is not free because it is determined by certain considerations and there are some important methods of non-random sampling and as we say that, that is deliberative sampling, quota sampling and convenience sampling. So sometimes non-random sampling itself is known as deliberative but even, in, even so we have what is known as deliberative sampling. Now if this is deliberative sampling is uh, say judgmental judgment sampling or purposive sampling so it in this the sample is taken out from the universe according to the requirement of the investigator so in this the investigator selects those units which he thinks are fully representative of the universe now for example if a sample of 10 students is to be taken out from a population of 100 students who use a particular brand of pen, the investigator will select only those students whom he considers true representative of the population. Thus, in this method, the selection is based upon the investigator's judgment. This method is very simple. It is more suitable in those fields of inquiries where some items are so important to be included in the sample. And this method is also of great significance when all the units of the uni universe are not homogeneous. So obviously, since the sample is taken according to the objective of the inquiry, the conclusions drawn will be sufficiently reliable. Okay, so you want to find out you know that this particular pen is better and you want only that particular pen. So that is how you're going to make a study on that. Now, uh, of course, one big demerit is that there's a great possibility of the results being affected by the personal prejudice. Maybe the person in question is talking about a pen because he feels that that's the best. So that could be the personal bias or personal prejudice. Let's take the second one, the quota sampling. Under this method, the population is divided into different groups or classes according to different characteristics of population. Some percentage of different groups of total population is fixed. Further, some quota of the items to be selected is fixed for each group. The investigator selects the fixed number of items from each group to frame a sample. But selection of sample items within quota items will be made by the investigator according to his choice. Suppose in a budget reaction survey to be done, the interviewer may be told to interview 100 people living in a particular area. They are also told that out of the 100 persons to be interviewed, 25% should be housewives. 25% salaried class people, 20% industrialists, 15% farmers and 10% traders and the remaining 5% students. So in a way you, are, you will get a fairly good idea about how the budget has impacted the various groups. So uh, merit could be that it gives a more reliable results only if the interviewers are well trained and experienced and this method is economical as the cost of preparing sample is quite low now there's something known as convenience sampling that is also there 
This is purely according to your convenience. However you want to. Whatever you want to do. For example, this method is different from the above methods, above mentioned methods, that is deliberative sampling and quota sampling. Under this method, the sample units are selected by the investigator according to his convenience. So, whatever he feels like, whatever you want. It can be like, for example, you want to find out that uh, how many ho households are, uh, say, using the mother dairy milk or the other milk. So it's very simple. You just you just go and find out. You, I mean, yeah, you go into your own area. Maybe you are staying in an area which is absolutely um, high flown area and you, you might get a different, you might get an absolute uh, different um, unreliable result. But that is also there. It is because they are not true. Basically, it's not very true of the representative of the universe. And it does suffer from a personal bias. But yes, just to get an ordinary idea, it's less, uh, less expensive, less time consuming. It's on the whims of and fancy of the investigator. Perhaps he stays and he doesn't want to really waste time. He already has a preconceived notion about it already and just wants to support it with a little bit of his study. So this is known as convenience sampling.